Thank you. Now um, I'm going to talk about the Blätterhöhle, which is uh, really an um, excavation project and research project that keeps us busy for, let's say, 15 years now, 14 years to be more precise. And as Annabel has said, um, we publish a variety of papers, uh, including on the paleogenetic and isotopic evidence of existence of hunter-gatherer fishes up to the fourth millennium BC. Um, the site is located towards the north of the Westphalian uplands, an area that we call Sauerland, within the town of Hagen, that is just south of the Ruhrgebiet. And um, it's included in a Devonian limestone formation that is quite common here, as you can see, in the uh, blue uh, color, containing lots of caves. We're talking about, about 500 caves in that area. More closely, the Weissenstein forms a prominent limestone ridge um, with, and also contains several caves, uh, nine, I think, and among them is the Blätterhöhle. Now, the entrance of the cave is uh, found below a steep cliff, several meters uh, above the valley floor. You can see it over here. It's a quite closed uh, situation. Now, I'm not going to talk about the time schedule here. Uh, important is that the whole thing started really with a radiocarbon date on um, a skull cap that turned out to be pre-boreal, early Mesolithic. Without that, uh, this, I think, nothing much would have happened. Yeah. Um, excavations are carried out within the cave and in front of the entrance. So, in fact, we are talking about two sites. I'm going to talk about the entrance area or the, errands, the area in front of the cave that is, in fact, a former rock shelter. Collapsed rocks were found on top of the stratigraphy and also within the sediments, improving the existence of a former abri-like situation. Intense dating of human remains found in the cave um, proved the use of the cave as some kind of a burial place during the late Neolithic and pre-boreal early Mesolithic. Similar situations like this are known uh, in Belgium, close to Namur and Dinan, an area rich in caves as the area we have here. Uh, and that is about 280 kil kilometers away. The excavations proved the existence of early Holocene and at least final Pleistocene sediments several meters in depth in the area of the rock shelter. Altogether, more than 20 square meters were excavated, um, reached highly different depths, and numerous profiles were documented, micromorphological samples were taken, and so on. Uh, analyzing all the materials will probably uh, last several more years. However, an archaeologi from an archaeological point of view, uh, the uncovering of a complex Mesolithic stratigraphy within the sediments covering a relatively small space below this rock cliff was highly unexpected and is, similar, uh, is, is singular within the wider area. From the late Mesolithic to the earliest Mesolithic, several find layers were uncovered. Interesting is the presence of at least one uh, typical mistletoe leaf that point to Northwestern European Rheinmaß, Schelde, or RMS tradition, increasing the small number of fine spots east of the River Rhine. Now, generally, the um, early Mesolithic is connected to the so-called Baronian, as several microliths prove, and furthermore, from the boreal, several AMS-stated hearth episodes are present. Now, here, hafting and retooling, repairing of hunting equipment took place, proved by an arrow shaft smoother, and the dominance of mostly impacted and fractured um, microliths in the inventories. Core boring, by the University of Cologne proved that below this Mesolithic find horizon, some four meter of classic sediments are present and that raised the hope to reach even older sediments with archeological remains, uh, at least dating to the final Pleistocene. And that was not disappointed. In 2016, the first stratified and clearly not Mesolithic tool, a uh, slender partially back point was found far below the oldest Mesolithic find horizon. And later on, a new grayish brownish sediment matrix uh, was labeled as sediment 6C. You can see that on the base of this stratigraphy. 
right behind me, below this Mesolithic find horizons. On top, the basal parts of the sediment 6b are present, close to the back wall of the rock shelter, highly bioturbated, as it is usually the case. Above this profile, the sediment 6b is the Mesolithic stratigraphy. On its base, as it sh is shown here, we have numerous shattered limestone fragments, uh, rare lithics, and only a few bones. And, but below this gray sediment 6C that is also attached to the back wall of the rock shelter is this gray um, sediment. Remastered with this free software de-stretch, the grayish sediment 6C is clearly visible to the north of the profile. Um, the coloring of the sediment is a consequence of black carbon inputs. Um, so a hearth must be, uh, must be nearby, um, where also napping activity took place in the surroundings. So below that, a loess-like sediment 8 was defined. With this, within, uh, this is a distinct reddish horizon. Um, although it is was, was analyzed using RFA as a natural accumulation of iron oxide minerals. And below that, a big limestone, a big limestone blocks came to light. Within this sediment, is eight that almost contains no finds. Sediment um, 6C is in contrast to that quite numerous, um, we have quite numerous artifacts, very tiny chips and debitage, also several back points and other tools. So let's talk about the lithics. Now on the basal part, as I said on 6B, we're only but clearly below the Mesolithic horizon. We have a few shattered lithics, among them these um, different back pieces. Now, a slender piece was already mentioned to the uh, right. Um, a further point with a straight back and a broken piece shows basal retouch that makes it a variant of a back points of Mallory type. The inventory of sediment 6C is much richer than that. We have several back points of different variants only slightly or partly backed, an angled back piece with a thin backed edge, perhaps resembling a knife, and highly scattered back pieces due to impact fractures uh, as the bipolar fractured back point with a thick back and two small backed bladelets. Now one back point shows show some kind of a tang and a real slender tang point, that one here, is also a projectile and that is proved by microware analysis. Now, furthermore, some large blades and bladelets, sometimes etched, retouched, or used, were found. An end scraper on a short blade and a flat core recycled to a splintered piece. And last year, we had a typical microburin um, and a slender borer missing its elongated tip. Most of the lithics are made of patinated flint, which is, in fact, erratic Baltic flint. Uh, from the rivers. Some uh, pieces like the microburin might represent Western European flint variants, and here further work has to be done. Uh, furthermore, we have several lithics that is made of local raw material, uh, so-called lidit. As in the Mesolithic horizons, we have some um, pebbles. Uh, among them is a retoucher. If we are looking for any comparison dating to the finer Pleistocene, early Holocene transition, we have to look to the west. And here, at least in western France, um, assemblages containing a right collection of back pieces are and are labeled as epilaborien. However, further elements are labeled as diagnostic as some kind of degenerated tank points, um, trapezial um, microliths, uh, while the last type is missing in the assemblage we have here. A tank point is present, but again, missing is the distinct Le Blanchet back point, which is um, a typical and mainly present in Western France within this period. But as an as exception, uh, accepted proof, uh, with a proved exception in Belgium and England, also present. Other finds labeled as Le Blanchet points in the east are found within Arendsburgian or EP Arendsburgian context. However, it seems to us we have uncovered at this um, Blätterhöhle uh, rock shelter a new kind of assemblage of a terminal Pleistocene, early Holocene transitional period that shows clear inferences from the West, as the Mesolithic does, 
while others of that time in our region, namely the long blade industries, are a derivative of the Arendsburgian, which is, on the other hand, expanded, has expanded far to the west, um, as the Belosian side in France showed. It seems that in northwestern Europe, during this short period of time, we have uh, several techno complexes that suddenly appear, proving influences from different regions, and shortly after disappear again or evolve into earliest Mesolithic techno complexes, like, for instance, the broad blade Mesolithic. A short period of time with its major environmental changes in our region saw a highly dynamic interchange of ideas and innovations, which seems to be much clearer now than only some 10 years ago. Now, we will continue to work in the final um, Pleistocene sediments this year as excavation is running as we talk now, but space is getting small, money anyway. Um, and it looks as if we have to leave this part of the stratigraphy and have to concentrate on other areas of the rock shelter and the interior of the cave. Now, these multiple, multiple results of some 15 years of research at the site were really highly unexpected when in 2004 the speleologists showed up with their idea to explore this tiny narrow hole in a limestone cliff at Hagen. I have to thank the following people who are or were involved in the project and for your interest. Thank you. <laughs>